Welcome back, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Quest for Glory 1. When last we left off, we were talking to Zarya. Zarya has a mysterious, unearthly look to her. You have the feeling that she is a person not to be trifled with. And the game very much means it. You screw around with her, she will literally destroy you. Pardon me. But yeah, um, as we discovered last... Um, Flora does not respond. Yes. Good job. As we discovered last game, um, no, last time, we apparently do not possess enough to buy the flame spell. Let's see if we can pet, uh, buy fetch as you read the spell scroll. The spell is ingrained in your mind. We now know our first magic spell. Your spells don't don't seem to work here. We cannot cast it in town. We can only cast such things at predetermined locations throughout the game. Or in combat, if we have a combat spell. But that's neither here nor there. We can't do anything else here. And she vanishes! She has now vanished. And now we are outside. Let us go into the guild. You enter the guild, uh, the adventurer's guild hall. This adventurer's guild hall reminds you of the one in your hometown. The traditional moose head and the other stuffed and, uh, monsters. Saurus, trolls, griffin, dragon, cheetar, and the terrible Antwerp. All adorn the walls. You see a registration book on the table and the bulletin board full of job listings. The man seated in the w um, near the window must be the guildmaster. He is snoring. He must have a very busy day to be sleeping in a chair. You sign your name in the adventurer's log book with a flourish. Garen has been here. This is certainly a weird one. You've never seen anything quite like it. That's an Antwerp. The plaque says Antwerp, slain by two guys from Andromeda. Weird. The head is like a panther, but with a strong human-like quality. It's still rather frightening. The plaque says Cheetar, slayed by Wolfgang Abentuar. Probably this dude right here. Even in death, this monster remains awesome. The plaque set reads Dragon, slain by Baron Stefan von Spielberg. It looks like it must have been a particularly nasty troll. You wouldn't want to meet him in a dark forest. The plaque reads, Troll slain by Wolfgang Abentois. A past adventurer's armor suit. You wonder why he doesn't need it anymore. Then you see the Cheetar claw marks. I see. This crossbreed of eagle and lion could have torn a man apart when it was alive. The plaque reads, Griffin, slain by Wolfgang Abentois. The plaque under the moose says, Courtesy of Sierra Online's prop, de uh, prop department. <laughs> I see what you did there, Sierra. I see what you did. You have never saw a purple source before you came to Spielberg, but it looks like a really stupid monster. The plaque reads, Source slain by Hans Half -e Halfwitten. Hans Halfwitten. Neat! The tapestry is so rotten, it would probably fall apart at the slightest touch. Let's test this theory! The tapestry feels very old and very fragile. Oh. Let's go over here. So many things to look at. Reward for the return of the lost ring. Inquire at the healers. Okay. This poster is rather dusty and faded. The picture is a small child with braids. Reward of 50 gold for the safe return of Elsa von Spielberg. Inquiry at Spielberg Castle Gates. That looks like it hasn't been touched in a while. The reward of 30 gold for the capture or death of the brigand war... Warlock. 
Description. Short, ugly, and wears a brightly colored robes. Has a habit of laughing constantly. Inquire at the Spielberg gates. Hmm. Wanted. Brigand leader. Description. Unknown appearance. Wears a cloak. Must provide proof of the leader's identity. Reward. 60 gold. And the title of Hero of the Realm. Inquire at Spielberg castle gates. This sounds like it'd be upper alley. But we'll have to figure that out later. Notice. Spell components needed. Cash or trade for potions. Inquire at the healers. This poster seems like it has been here a while. It's a picture of a handsome but arrogant young man. Fifty, a reward of 50 gold coins for the information leading to the return of Baronet Bernard von Spielberg. Inquire at Castle Gates. I think these two are related. Not sure why, but I think they are. Let's see. Now we go back. And last but not least, let us go deal with Mr. Sleeping Gentleman. <laughs> I was so busy, I didn't notice you come in. Welcome, welcome. This is, it is so seldom that we have new adventurers here. Most people think the valley is cursed. Watch as I polish my sword. <laughs> yes, uh, as I was saying. Yeah, boy. Let's ask him about the guild hall. This is where the adventurers can come find out who needs someone brave and courageous. There are uh, most jobs. Many jobs are in the bulletin board over there. It is also a good place to talk about adventures in a cold afternoon. We used to play cards here once a week as well, but there are too few adventurers in Spielberg anymore. They are all died from monsters or brigands, or they just got too old. Let's ask about adventurers. Did I ever tell you about the time when Schultz and I rid the Valley of Antwerp? Yeah, it was very, it was real adventurous that we were very, yeah. I am so flabbergasted by the epicness of the tale that I flubbed my line. We were adventure, real adventurers then, and this was the real guild hall. Now we are just old men. This is just a place for to tell old stories. Ah, yes. The olden days. Let's ask him about monsters. You can see some of the types of monsters that live around here if you look at a wall. There are trolls, griffins, cheetahs, mantras, and goblins wandering in the woods. I see there are I hear that there's even some ogres and uh, Saurus Rexes back in this valley. There was a time when Schultz and I had gotten rid of most of the monsters around here, but we are too, far too old for that now. <sighs> Let us ask about the troll. Trolls are very tough. Fortunately, they only come out at night. The woods are very dangerous at night as a result. If I were you, I'd stick around in town. A source is an easy um, to avoid and easy to kill, but for a skilled adventurer. Let's ask about ogres. Ogres are a lot like goons, but even meaner. Not as bright, though. Ah, yes, back when goons were actually considered their own monster class. Let's ask about goblins. Goblins are not tough, but when they gang up on you, they can take out an unwary adventurer. Cheetar. Cheetar are ferocious creatures that charge out of nowhere and try to tear you to shreds. Sometimes they succeed. This is not very pretty. That's how we lost Heimrich that one year. Ah, jumped on him and tore him apart. Unfortunate. But very informative. Mantras. Those weird things are magical. They are best avoided. Saurus Rex. Don't mistake those things for sauruses. When they come at you, it's sometimes best just to run away. And we've asked about all of them. We've asked about monsters. Bulletin boards. 
but it's out in the vault. Over on the vault over there is the home of the jobs posted for adventurers. Some have been there for a long time now. There just aren't too many good adventurers around here lately. Reward. You need to talk to either the Baron or the Healer about that. Healer. The house is just north of the town gate. She's a rather nice woman. Castle. The castle is just north of the healer's house. Alright, let us ask about the trophies. Stoltz and I killed most of the monsters on those walls. Let's ask about the dragon. One day, years ago, a pair of dragons tried to take over the Ar Valley. We adventurers rode out to meet them. I can still see Stefan von Spielberg charging towards on his black horse. He slew the dragon whose head you see on the wall, and the other one flew away. I hear people say that there are other dragons flying high overhead sometimes, but it was never it has never dared to attack us again. The Antwerp. This valley was overrun by those odd monsters one year. Schultz and I fought hard, long and hard to rid the valley of those things. We might have failed even so, had it not been for those two particular tourists that came to our aid. Tourists? They called themselves... said there was some uh, some place called Andromeda. Must be some some place south of here, I guess. They were certain... they certainly were odd. Interesting. Let us ask about the troll. I remember the day I killed that one. It was the biggest uh, I'd ever seen. It put up a tough fight, but I was tougher. You can see the results on the vol. The cheetor? Watch out for the cheetors. I bear the scars of a fight with one of them on the wall this day. Still, it is stuffed, and I am still alive. Can't say the same for Heinrich, though. Very tragic. Still very informative. The Saurus. I remember when Hans killed that one there. It was a tough fight for him. Hans Halfwitten. He wasn't he wasn't much of an adventurer, but he did manage to kill a Saurus before he made the mistake of tangling with his troll. Probably the same van on the Val over there. And finally the moose. This is one of the most vicious moose I've ever saw. Nearly bit my nose off. I highly doubt that. Let's say. Let's see. Um, let's ask about Schultz Meisterson. What do you know about him? Schultz Meisterson and I have been friends for a long time. He too was once a real adventurer. Now he's just the sheriff of this town. Otto. I like Yato, even though he's a goon. Schultz has him almost trained. Hmm. Goon. What are goons, exactly? A goon is a lot like an ogre. Not as tough, but a little smarter. The sheriffs Otto and Crusher at the tavern are both goons. Oh. I remember Crusher. That's gonna be fun. But enough of that. Um... We'll ask about this other stuff later when it becomes slightly more relevant. Now, let us go. And as we walk away, he immediately passes out. We are now outside once again. And now we walk down the street on this way. Let's see. Actually, before we do that, let's see. Is there any other, you know, other stuff that can be, uh... Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, moving on. You, s uh, you can smell apples as you approach this counter. Good day, and welcome to Spielberg. Would you like to buy some of my nice fresh vegetables or fruits? <coughs> Pardon me. There are a variety of vegetables for sale, and the shopkeeper is a centaur. And it just says the same thing. The scales are used to weigh the vegetables. You can see a charming young centaur with the upper torso of a teen and the body of a filly. That is a very young centaur. 
What is your name? My name is Hild, daughter of Heinrich, uh, prefer... Prefer... <laughs> prefer de Ferdin. Oh, good gods. Uh, the farmer. Ugh. I completely botched that entire name. Uh... Yes, you could just go straight in for the, you know, fedora approach and, uh, ask for a date outright. But Garen is a very, very, you know, suave and very couth gentleman and will not do such a thing. Tell me about your farm. We have some land to the north of town. It isn't very big, but we grow many things. You should be there during harvest time, and you would see many of the fruits and vegetables. Uh, mother. My mother has been dead for three years. I still miss her. I haven't touched a sore spot. Not good. Fa uh, father. My father is uh, Heinrich. I am not pronouncing that name again because I butchered it horribly. Farmer. My father is a fine farmer. That is, uh... Ignore that date option because that is not something we do. They have twice robbed my father of his money, and they have tried to steal fo our food in the, uh, during the winter. This is because our farm is outside of town. The brigands would not dare try it in town. The sheriff would stop them fast. Robbery. Many robbers ran up my to father as he trotted back to town. My father tried to fight, but they hurt him badly. They then ran away to the southwest. And the sheriff. Our sheriff is very brave. He told me so himself. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's ask about something else. I think we're good for the time being. Let us uh, continue walking down the street. What is that? A butcher shop. And that? This building looks old, dark, and a little seedy. The sign above the door depicts a beer stein. Copper gold, um, a silver coin for um, the idea of that being uh, a tavern. Let us walk down this street. This grubby place must be an alley. It feels strange. Colder than the rest of town. There are some barrels discarded here. A beggar holds out a bowl towards you. Arms, arms for the poor. Now you could just be a total git and uh, not give him any money, but Garen is definitely not such a person. We shall, we shall give him. Thanks. You know it's really tough trying to make a living begging in this uh, in this town since the brigands started scaring all the way to trade. Begging. A beggar gets cash only when others get cash. And nobody's got much money here right now. Except maybe the brigands. Cash. There's honest work up at the Baron's castle, I hear. But begging's my business. Work. You can get a job cleaning the stable, I understand. It's great if you want to build up muscles or have a place to spend the night. But you won't get rich. I'd rather beg myself. Uh, name. My name's Sam. I've lived here for five years now, and I think I'll be heading on once the past clears of snow. It's supposed to be nice. There's some nice good town begging in the south. Nice talking with you. Arms! Arms for the poor! What's south? Heard Silmaria is a good place to be. By the sea. I think I'll head there after this. Ah, <sighs> okay, let's see. Um, nighttime. I remember when people used to stroll around town after dark. It's a spell in Spielberg, so it uh, glows at night. Now, the only people out at night are thieves. And out of town, man, you don't dare go out there without a light when the sun goes down. The night gaunts will get you. It's about time for me to get back to work. Unfortunately... We cannot talk to him anymore, for the time being. Let's go this way. A word of warning to you. Don't drink the dragon's breath. 
What are they referring to, you might ask? Let's go over here and find out. The grimy window lets in little light into this tavern. It smells like stale ale and other more unpleasant things. The floor is covered with dirt, the bar with sticky beer. The smoke appears to be rising from the center casket behind the bar. To the right, two gamblers are playing cards. The bartender glares at you as you enter, and so does the ugly goon to the left. You get the impression that you're not welcome. I wonder why. You pick up the note. You smooth out the piece of paper and read. B. He is starting to get suspicious. Hold off on your meeting for a bit. But I'll keep you posted by these notes. B. Neat. What's that right there? Go ahead and pick the dirt up. But if you want my opinion, nothing on Shapir would introduce and would induce me to remove the years of accumulated dirt. Neat. Let's just talk to the goon over here. Let's talk to Crusher. The goon seems to be ignoring you. Let's talk again. The tavern. The goon, he seems to be annoyed at you. I'm going to save real quick, because uh, I suspect that continuing to pester this um, goon will result in hilariousness. Goon! Crusher bears his teeth at you. Either you're being big trouble now, or that is just him smiling. Yeet! I think we annoyed him. Well, that went well. Let's go this way. The door is barred and nailed shut. The workshop has long since been abandoned. Can't seem to open the door. It might be locked. Might be locked, you say? Let's see about that. In broad daylight? Are you kidding? You'll be arrested for sure. Okay. Now, can't pick the lock right now. That is a pity. Let's go this way. Let's go over here. What is in here? There's no response. The lock is of simple type. Let's go inside. The, the... This shop looks like a dry goods store, but it smells like a musty library. The stove seems ni it feels nice on, the on such a crisp day. Behind the counter and on the shelves are a variety of items for sale. The shopkeeper appears to be ignoring you while reading his book. Oh, sorry. Didn't notice you come in. My, you look like an adventurer. You wouldn't... We, we don't see too many of you around here. The brigands tend to um, get rid of most adventurers before they make it to town. I do try to stock up on some adventure, some things adventurers can use. I actually would rather be an adventurer than a shopkeeper, you see. My items are pretty ordinary, though. You probably already have most of them if you have already done adventure, any adventuring at all. Let's see. If I recall, they take money. A uh, flask. We do, in fact, need a flask. Here you go. Thank you for your patronage. All right. Now that we've done business with the man, let us talk. Name. Why? That's me, Casper. Uh, adventurer. I always wanted to be adventurer. I read all about them all the time. All, all the time. I think that's a typo. The book I was just reading was about adventuring. The book. Oh, this book. It's about an adventurer who's trying to become a hero. The title is Quest for Glory, A Hero's Death. Hmm. Bit ominous and slightly foreshadowing, don't you think? I'm kind of wishing I didn't, you know, read that. Anyway, um, equipment. Unfortunately, I have only standard weapons and equipment. I carry daggers and chain mail. Maybe someday I'll be able to carry magic ones, though. Um, flask. It's a very good idea to carry an empty flask or two, in case you want to pick up a liquid or something else that, that needs a container. Our flasks um, are a great bargain at two silver each. 
I think I will pick up a secondary one. Here you are. Thank you for your patronage. How much gold do I have left? You have five silver left. Okay. That's fine. We have... Okay, hang on. You have two empty flasks. Okay, cool. Good. Good to know. Let's talk to him again. Um, daggers. Ah, the skill, uh, the use of a dagger is most skillful art. Actually, this particular weapon is longer than most, but it's still easily concealable. A bargain at 20 silver. We may be picking that up later. Which is interesting, because uh, he has a standard broadsword. He looks like he has a broadsword over there. Which kind of irks me slightly. I don't know why. Moving on. Let us leave. And he goes back to reading. Alright. Now, we've done everything we can here for the moment. So next time, folks, as soon as I can have us face the camera, say a lot for that cameraman, um, when next we meet, folks, we shall be heading out into the wider valley itself. Hopefully we don't find any death out there. Who am I kidding? We will probably find death out there. Just hopefully not ours. Anyway, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I shall see you then. Later.